Welcome to today's GoldEye Show. I'm your host, Theo Tutkaluk, here on Amateur Sports TV, brought to you by The Common, down inside the Forks. On today's episode, it's the pitchers segment. A couple of relief pitchers in Mitch Aker and Brandon Biggle will join us, talking about the ins and the outs of being a relief pitcher and the importance to their commitment to the Gold Eyes this season. As well, we will have an exclusive interview with one Ryan Johnson, Winnipeg born and bred. He is back serving as the latest Manitoba-born Gold Eye since 2006, 13 years ago. We'll sit down with him and he'll share his excitement here on the Gold Eye Show live on ASTV. If you take the first mortgage you're offered, a high interest rate could take your travel budget and send it packing. Before you choose a mortgage, take a second look. Get serious about your mortgage. Contact Case Financial Group today. If you take the biggest mortgage you can get, you might find your budget can't support other important costs, like buying furniture. Don't let your mortgage weigh you down. Get serious about your mortgage. Contact Case Financial Group today. Welcome to the Gold Eye Show. Joining me, Theo Tutkaluk, of course. Mitch Aker, not a starting pitcher, but not a closing pitcher, but in the middle pitcher. Welcome to the Gold Eyes. Your first year. First year. How did you hear about signing with the Gold Eyes uh, before the season started? Uh, it's a funny story. So um, I work out with Kevin Lachance, who just got picked up in the offseason. And um, Rick went to go watch him work out. And he kind of saw me pitch. And Kevin put in a good word for me as well. So that's kind of how that happened. It was kind of a be in the right place at the right time kind of thing. And how have you enjoyed your, your start with the fish this year? I mean, you guys have a great record so far. And pitching's been vital. Absolutely. I mean, there's two things, pitching and defense when it comes to AA ball. you got to have both. And right. I think you guys are on point with the pitching aspect of it especially. I agree. I think our defense helps us even more so. I mean, talent-wise, this is probably the best team I've ever been on. So, I mean, you have West at third, a triple-A middle infield. You can put anybody at first on our team, and they're going to get the job done. And Kevin and Cody behind the plate, I mean, you can't really go wrong with anybody. And then our outfield play is off the charts also. So Yeah, we, we Josh and I have talked about the four guys in the outfield, mixing them up and one always DHing. But I asked Kevin this question last week. i got to ask you the same, the relationship between pitcher and catcher. How important is that, being on the same page? I mean, it's everything. I mean... Kevin's obviously going to catch mostly every day, and he gets to see all the hitters all the time. I do what I can to see what hitters' tendencies are in the bullpen, but it's kind of hard to tell from so far away. So I, I trust Kevin and what he puts down, and usually we're on the same page of what we want to throw at certain times and certain counts. So I, I trust him. That's good news because, I mean, like Kevin was injured a lot last year. Having him back this year, a good veteran backstop is always a key to uh, winning success. Definitely. Uh, Favorite pitch? Favorite pitch? Fastball. Straight up the middle? Is it a two-seamer? Is it a four-seamer? What's the difference between a two-seam and a four-seam fastball? Uh, I have both. Okay. Uh, my four-seamer stays straight for the most part, and then my two-seam kind of runs arm side and sinks a little bit. So that's the difference between both of mine. Um, but I'll throw both. I've never situation. known the difference. That's why I had to ask a pitch. No. Two-seam, yeah. four-seam, curveball, breaking ball as well? Uh, slur slurvy kind of thing. Slurvy. And then, uh, <laughs> and then a change-up. So. Right on. So the, we'll call it the 2 a.m. pitch because those are kind of slurvy when they leave the establishment. That's so about right. There you go. So prior to this, you said this was probably the most talented team you played for. Mm -hmm. Does that excite you, knowing that you're coming to a great squad like this? And in the AA ball, I mean, it's a pretty healthy division, both the North and the South. I mean, you guys have a lot of great competition this year. Oh, I agree. I mean, it kind of... It gets me excited, yes, but it also pushes me to be better every day. Not necessarily to keep up with everybody, because, I mean, everybody's here for a reason. But at the same time, it just pushes myself to get better every day and to have that internal competition within the bullpen. I know myself, Marcus Crescentini, I mean, we're, we have a good relationship, but at the same time, we're kind of trying to beat each other, and I think that's beneficial for the team. So that's fantastic. So like a Thor Hulk kind of thing. Basically, yeah. Right on. So either of you get the call, two innings, three innings, throwing about 40, 50 pitches a night. Uh, that's about right for you guys? It depends on the situation. I mean, I've kind of been a one-inning guy. I'll rarely go more than one, but, I mean, if Skip needs me to go more than one, I'm more than happy to. Fabulous. Yeah. So you got the strength. Yeah. Oh you got yeah. The, I mean, you're a young kid. Young kid. There you go. Okay. Yep. Couple fun questions. Uh, outside of the ballpark, where have you been in Winnipeg, and what do you like best? 
Oh, where have I been in Winnipeg? I kind of just walked around the city. Um, I've been to the Forks. The Forks is really nice. I like it. Um, trying to get to the outlet mall. Trying to get to the Lulu outlet. Little Lulu shopping? Trying okay. to. You trying guys to. really don't have a lot of time for uh, enjoyment. It's a busy schedule. It is. It it's is. 100 games. It's a summer. It's a lot of time. For sure. But um, I know when we get our off days, we kind of just like to relax. And then I'll use that day to kind of explore the city and gotcha. try and see new stuff. Okay. So as you explore the city and outside of the ballpark food, what's your favorite type of food before a game? Before a game, I like to keep it light and like a protein and like a healthy carb, something like that. Very Nothing cool. like Taco Bell or anything like that. That'd be bad news for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mitch, I want to thank you very much. Uh, for joining us here on the Gold Eye Show. Any last words you'd want to say to young pitchers uh, to maintain, you know, to keep their focus on, you know, pitching and whatnot? Yeah, uh, watch MLB games. I mean, you can learn a lot from big league guys. I certainly do. And nobody's ever too good or too perfect. So, I mean, you can always get better. And that's that's what I'd say. To so, who was your guy what, growing up? Growing up, uh, probably... I had a couple guys. Right now, it's Max Scherzer. I love Max Scherzer. Um, growing up, that's a good one. I don't really know. Was it a pitcher? Was it a was it a position player? It was a position player. I like Jim Edmonds the most. There you um, go, Jimmy. Because I uh, in high school, I was more of an outfielder than a pitcher. So okay. I kind of watched Jim Edmonds, and yeah, he's a uh, by far my favorite player. The of all acrobatic time. catches in center field. Exactly. There you go. Yeah. Well, Mitch, well, thank you very much. Good luck for the rest of the homestand, and uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Right on. Back on the Gold Eye Show with Theo Tetkalek, brought to you by Inn Inside or the Common Inside the Forks. Go check them out and uh, have some fun while you're che checking out the Forks. There, all the stores, all the shops. Joining me now, number 15 on the shirt, number one in our hearts, Brandon Bingle, second year with the Fish. Tell me, Brandon, what's different about last year and this year? What's the most important thing you think has changed? Uh, I think experience. Uh, you know, with the lineup and uh, on the pitching staff in general. Uh, we have a lot of older guys, a lot of high-level uh, minor leaguers and a few big leaguers. Um, so just, you know, knowing the grind of how long the year is and um, just how to go about things is, you know, really big this year. For sure. Like the roster is usually 50% pitching, 50% uh, positional players. A lot of right-handed uh, pitchers this year, a couple of lefties. Yeah. Uh, this is your second year on the team. A bit of a veteran we can call you now because you're one of the older guys now. But yeah. what do you tell the younger guys when it's their first year coming into A ball? What do they? What do you try to relax them with? Uh, I think just you know staying with the process and not you know you have a bad outing. Everyone's gonna have a bad outing or bad day. Um, trying to get by that and staying positive and knowing get better every time out instead of you know hanging on that one bad day you had. It's quick to get rid of the laundry. Yeah. Get rid of the dirty laundry. Refocus. Yeah. That's always hard for everyone, anyone that plays sports. It's absolutely. Uh, i got to ask you one question. How do you yourself prepare, knowing that you got to come in and either clean up some dirty work or you got to hold on to a lead? Um, you know, really trying to stay the same every time, whether we're down five or up one, whatever it is, tie game. Trying not to actually think too much and you know, staying even keel about it. And just so there's not day. a lot of change in between the types of scenarios you walk in. You just go in and pitch. Yeah. So you're like bit like Duke Lelouch from Durham Bulls saying yeah. don't think just throw oh yeah rosebud to the front big guy kind of thing always gotcha okay so having your second year how much nicer is knowing you have a winning season so far you guys have played great on the road playing fantastic at home mm -hmm. you guys have won every series thus far how important is that for the mental stability of this team yeah it's big I mean I think that goes you know hand in hand with the experience you guys have done this before um, at a high level so yeah. Getting here and getting off to a good start is definitely good for us. You talk about having great pitching, and of course, you being a pitcher, you're going to say the pitching is the highlight. And if you talk to a, a hitter, they're going to say, oh, timely hitting is the best thing. If you talk to an infielder, it's going to say defensive. Right. All three keys are working so well right now. Yeah. How has Skip been able to keep it all together? Yeah, it's just making the right choices, you know, every day. Um, 
putting a lineup out there that you know is going to get runs no matter who's on the mound for the other team and getting the right guys in there on the mound at the right time. And How's the chemistry in the locker room? It's awesome. Yeah? Yeah. You guys are good? Oh, yeah. Okay. All good. If you could have, because you don't hit, I didn't ask this question. It's one of the new questions so far. If you could have a song that brings you out to the mound, what would it be? Oh. Something by ACDC. Something by ACDC? Yeah. Something okay. off the Back in, uh, Back in Black album. Back in Black album. Yeah. Okay. That's good. I like that. Okay. Because I'm going to ask, that's going to be one of my new questions, but I like that one. Let's see if Ryan answers the same way or not. But yeah. A couple other questions for fun. Uh, being this your second year, outside of Shaw Park, what do you enjoy doing most here in Winnipeg when you have a bit of spare time? Definitely golfing. Okay. We have a few good hookups on golf courses around here. Okay. Um, it's always fun to get out on an off day or yeah. after a day game or something like that. Okay. So you, are you a drive for show or you a putt for dough kind of guy? Mm, more consistency. Okay. You know, okay. Throughout, throughout the whole thing. Good answer. Whole thing. Steady. Yeah. Okay. Right on. Well, I want to thank you very much for joining us. Uh, again, come down to Shaw Park. Come check out the boys' beautiful weather here on the Gold Eye Show with Theo Tatkala. Are you looking for a career in the salon industry? Check out Aveda Institute Winnipeg in the exchange. What sets us apart is our student mentorship program, 95% placement rate after graduation, real-world salon experience, and network of 7,000 salons and spas. You will learn creative cut and coloring, latest trends and techniques, social media marketing, fashion shows, photo shoots, and more. Now accepting applications for 2018, so check us out and book your tour today. Aveda Institute Winnipeg, hair school the way it should be. One. Back here on the Gold Eye Show in beautiful Shaw Park, not a cloud in the sky. I'm going to get burnt here in the next 15 minutes, Ryan, but that's okay. We're going to have a conversation with newly acquired left-handed pitcher, Winnipeg-born, sort of bred, Ryan Johnson. <laughs> Ryan, i got to ask you first and foremost, number 29 is a goalie number. You wore 18 in Lubbock, no choice on the number? I actually, so when I first got here, they gave me 32, and I thought, okay, well, 32 is cool. I don't mind it. I play. I had 32. Actually, one of my college numbers was 32. And then the next thing I know, I come up, come back the next day, actually the day for my start, and 29 is in my locker, and I kind of go, I cannot believe the odds of that, actually, because the number I grew up playing with my whole life in Manitoba was 29. And that's and, for goalie, you said, right? For hockey? Baseball, for everything. Everything. Base, oh, wow. Baseball and everything. So. so you were a number 29 guy from, maybe they did some research on that I mean, for you. I don't, that's some crazy research, though, because they, they don't really have those kinds of stats anywhere online. Like, he was number 29, you know, growing up. So I, when I saw it, I was like, I don't even know if he, I, I don't know if he looked into it or not, but I was, I told my parents, and like, what the heck is going on here? That's fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so growing up in Winnipeg, Youth baseball, youth sports, whereabouts in the city did you live and grow up? What teams were you playing for? I uh, grew up in St. James my whole life, actually. My, there was a brief stint where my, my mom went off and lived in Charleswood for a little bit. Um, but other than that, it's been St. James, West part of St. James my whole life. Uh, went to uh, French immersion schools and I was at Sturgeon Heights for a few years there, but played all sports, St. James, everything like that. I think when I was hockey, it was Heritage Victoria, Okay. those schools, those places like that. Yeah. All right, so sunny St. James is the born place. <laughs> of uh, Ryan Johnson. St. James, uh, you also played uh, junior A ball with the boys out in St. James? Absolutely. Yeah? yeah? Absolutely. Started with that, and then I had to do some research myself. 2009, the uh, youth group, the youth team with uh, Jason Miller. <laughs> he didn't play on the team, but he told me about how hard you throw. <laughs> and he says his hand and his, his catching hand was still very sore still. It was tough because, I mean, there's a bit of movement to it too. I, mean, I don't know how hard I was actually throwing. I mean, I, I don't really throw exceptionally hard, especially in a pro level. But um, for Manitoba, it was coming in pretty good. And I remember there's movement to it. And the first one I threw just came right back at him. And he just went, oh, my gosh. There you go. I was like, sorry, Millsy, I'll try and keep it in the zone <laughs> for you, buddy. <laughs> Do you have those conversations often with catchers nowadays? I mean, we talked all every time we talk to a pitcher, we talk about the importance of a relationship between pitcher and catcher, mm -hmm. and making sure you're on the same page. Obviously, with signs, yeah. but calling off batters, throwing to second, that kind of thing. How important is that having Garcia and the boys back behind the plate this year? Oh, it's incredibly important. I know one of the first conversations that we had about baseball in general was just, "Hey, what do you throw, man? Why do you like to throw it? And what are you most confident with?" That was yeah. the first thing we talked about. Actually, Kev had some sort of flu going on, so he couldn't even really, he couldn't really talk. So he came up to me and he had a ball and he just went. And I'm like, all right, pitches? He's like, see. All right. So I was like, oh, fastball, curveball, changeup, yeah. Was, That's awesome. Was good, really good relationship. So. so let's jump back in the Wayback Machine just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, baseball Academy just outside Edmonton. Uh, was those your high school years, just after high school? It was my senior year, actually. Okay. Yeah, senior year. Uh, growing, up from a, growing up here, 
uh, was at the Rookies Baseball Experience it's actually not Home Run Sports Training Facility um, but back then even they were preaching to us okay if you want to play at another higher level you got to leave Winnipeg at some point because there's just not enough opportunities here so an opportunity arose where I can go to play in St. Alberta for the year as for my senior year too and it was the first year program and uh, actually the pitching coach for Rookies was going to be one of the guys over there and he says hey you got to come with let's go great opportunity so I went and took it and everything just kind of skyrocketed from there so skyrocketing from there the first set of plans after seniors was was it Crowder then Crowder. after that yes Crowder yeah it was a Juco coming out of it they just went to the World Series before that they yeah. ranked top 10 in the nation at yeah. that time and had a great scholarship and an amazing opportunity to go there and then uh, after that went to College of Southern Idaho yeah. which was uh, more pitching for me because I actually I hit in uh, Crowder okay and a little bit of pitching wasn't so good but then I went to CSI and it was pretty much all pitching uh, got a couple all-conference awards there, which was nice. And Idaho, that area is so beautiful too. And learned a lot with the pitching coach there that was that played professional baseball. Was able to help me out with a lot of things there. And then sure. um, from there, uh, Lubbock. Lubbock, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah Lubbock. After that, so that. I got to ask you: when you go from the senior high school level into colleges, mm -hmm. especially southern colleges and colleges in the states where it's usually baseball and football are the yeah. number one, number two, yeah. you see some big guys up there. Awesome. You see a lot of power. You see a lot of pitchers that are roughly the same size as you. I mean, you're a pretty big guy. But, I mean, how did you take that first in? And that, Do you ever remember the first home run you gave up and be like, uh-oh? Do you remember that story? Do you have a story for I actually, that? I actually do remember the first okay. home run I ever gave up. College was actually at Crowder, and I didn't pitch much. But I remember the first college home run I gave up, uh, I threw a fastball outside. And it just kept, because it got, got run on it. So it was going out, it was going out. And the guy hit it. And I went, and I was like, I'll pop up. And I looked, and that thing was 30, 40 feet over the fence. I was like, oh, no, not even close. <laughs> like, oh. So the crack of the bat didn't even give you a chance, right? Not even a chance. Are these like, metal oh. bats on you, too? Yeah. Oh, so that's bats. a different, so yeah. metal bats is a whole different yeah, story. But, probably. I mean, it's a different sound off a of wooden bat. But yeah. at least you remembered giving up the first one. Um, you haven't given up many since. You look at your stats. I mean, your, I mean, your senior year in Lubbock was 13-2. and two. <laughs> Like your ERA was around three, sub three, mm -hmm. 107 innings, 100. You were pit, you were a monster at pitching to the point that you got pitching in the year awards in the Highland uh, Conference, Conference, Highland yeah. Conference that yeah. year. Tell me how exciting that was, you know, ending your season with Lubbock, and I mean, not saying your junior year wasn't any worse either. It was a fantastic the senior. Year was yeah. senior was fantastic. How were those last two years at Lubbock and the chemistry you built with that team? How great was it seeing with those guys and finishing off the year that well? You know that, I've said it before, I'll say it again, that place is special. You know, the, the people that are there, the faculty, staff, um, the teammates, the people in, 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 at Lubbock Christian, in, in Lubbock even, they're just genuine people. They're amazing. They want nothing but the best for you. They want you to succeed. They want you to have a great time. And the chemistry on that team this year was, I mean, that was a family. And, you know, it's cliche to say, you know, sports team, it's a family, it's a family, but we hung out with each other like almost every day. I mean, heck, around my, where I lived, there were three other houses of guys who are on the team that were walking distance from where I was, and it was walking distance to the school. And so I'd get off, get out, get out of practice, go home, just do a little bit of homework, and then I'd be like, all right, I'll just walk over to Peyton's house, open the door, and they're like, what's up, dude? I'm like, hey, man, you know, just hang out for a while, you know? And it, it was such an amazing, the chemistry is fantastic. I've never been roasted so much in my life, but I've also never laughed as much and loved as much as I have in, in my life either, just, or just the brotherhood out there. And, huh. you know, and I got to tip my cap to the hitters. Every time I went out there, they put up five runs. I think until two thirds through the season, they were averaging seven seven point two runs a game. I think it was every time I started. So it's pretty easy to win ball games if I know that all I have to do is throw strikes, get outs, let my boys hit. So and that was a huge part of the success, and that's what we preached from day one. Uh, coach Justin Sunley, pitching coach Justin Justin Sunley, was always like, "Hey, we're gonna go after these guys. Four pitches or less, and we're gone." And all right, sounds good. So then we just strike, 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 attack with the fastball in, be aggressive, and so. That's good. You're making short work up here too. I mean, one and zero right now. One no decision. Mm -hmm. Your ERA is less than one. I think it's a point one point seven one. I mean, you only had two starts, but nonetheless, how exciting was it to pitch here at Shaw Park opening your first game? I couldn't like, have, do you have uh, nerves a little bit? I, oh yeah. I mean, I, was, I wouldn't really say I was nervous, but I was jittery. You know, I was just more like. I, oh, I just don't want to suck. <laughs> and so for first pitch, I go out there and my back foot slips off the rubber and I bounce past the ball about 30, yard, 30 feet. And I looked around and there was just dead silence. And I went, okay, well, can't get any worse now. Might as well just keep trying. And um, it was amazing though, man. I mean, my family was sitting right behind 
and I had so many friends everywhere. I had uh, um, men's senior team actually. They were up in the stands wearing jerseys because they were doing 50-50 that day. No way. Oh yeah, and they were so rowdy. Good. Just heard them yelling and screaming the whole time, and uh, it, it, it couldn't, I couldn't have written it up any better to have my first pro start here at uh, Shaw Park in my hometown. And oh, positive too. No one, no one was gaggling or nothing like that. No, it was all of course positive. not. No, <laughs> I mean, come on. I, if there were, I didn't hear them. I mean, there was, there was so much more positive than negative. I mean, it's tough to even listen to the negative when there's that much going on. So. No, yeah, one start at home was fantastic, and I got to say it was uh, a good start. I mean, one and all, a lot of good reception. And uh, yeah, we'll get that in a second. There he is. He holds the ball a lot better in his hands when he's on the mound, really. Speaking of the ball, your favorite pitch? Fastball? Curveball? Slurve? I learned a nerve one, a slurvy. A slurve, yeah. Akers yeah. got this slurvy pitch, I've yeah. found out today. What's your favorite ball to throw from the mound? Uh, probably fastball, first pitcher? Fastball. I mean, okay. yeah, because I, I throw the most, fa out of all the pitches I throw, it's got to be a fastball. So okay. I'll just, I'm, I'm most confident with that in any count, pretty much. I mean, if okay. I'm going to challenge a guy, it's going to be with a fastball. So, okay. and again, it's not going to blow your door, it's not going to blow their doors off or, you know, but if I can get it in, it's, especially against a righty or a lefty, it's gonna be a tough pitch to hit because okay. the added movement. So that's my next question. Being a left-handed pitcher, that motion off the ball is different compared to a righty. Obviously, it sails differently. Mm -hmm. So when you're throwing it even at high 80s, like you do, yeah, I mean, you're, you're doing pretty good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but the extra movement helps a lot, right? Just another another dynamic to which the hitters just try and make that adjustment. And it's not always consistent movement. Sometimes it'll sink. Sometimes it'll go straight across. Or even, I've had some cut sometimes go the other way. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just huge. It's another having. It's like having two pitches in one, you know what I mean? So For sure. I'm just thankful I'm left-handed. <laughs> Very, two very seamer, happy. four seamer is difference. Uh, yeah, both actually. Okay. So, but I'll 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 mix it up uh, just based on how it's feeling at the time. Um, I like to go two seams arm side a lot, okay. uh, just because I get the natural movement. Again, something else that can help me against right-handed batters, especially if they're looking to be aggressive okay. early in the count. I get a little bit of extra movement on there, and hopefully, maybe it's not a barrel. You know, I'm looking for a swing. I want them to swing. So if I can get them to swing and it be off the end of the bat or weak contact, I'm, I'd love that because those boys up the middle. Oh, they're solid. Yeah. yeah, you got a great infield behind you. I think in that first game we had 13 ground outs, yeah. which was pretty impressive because put the ball on the ground, it's going right to those guys with a little bit of motion left and right, and it was easy out at first for them. So yeah, okay. got a lot of help in the infield, that's for sure. No kidding. A lot of help with the bats too. <laughs> You're getting some timely hitting. Yeah, two bombs. <laughs> yeah, that helps out, right? No, Just like the tough. old days in Lubbock, you, know, you get a little bit of run support oh, and bada man. bing, bada boom. Hey, give me the run. Give me, give me some runs and give us a chance to win. You know, yeah, I'm is. just going to go out there and try my hardest and give us a chance to win. So. Yeah, when, they, when Reggie hit that bomb, I was like, let's go. Buddy. There you go. Yeah, a little right. more excitement. Yeah, too. a little bit of weight off the shoulders, too. I thought, okay. Well, Speaking of excitement, how did you find out you were coming to Winnipeg? Um, we haven't touched on that yet. We haven't, no. Uh, so I ended up uh, getting in touch with Amos Ramon. He's an alumni here. He played for four years. Was uh, I think he was a hit, hitter of the year one year, yep. actually. So um, I'm, I'm still in touch with him, good buddies with him. And he comes up and watches a bunch of the games still. And so anyway, he was asking me, what do you got going on for pro opportunities, things like that. And I was like, well, I talked to the Red Sox a little bit. Didn't get drafted, obviously, draft's over. Um, but so I was talking to the Red Sox a little bit. Um, but that's about it. I was going to play some summer ball over in uh, Ontario in the IBL. And uh, he said, okay, well, you interested in going playing pro ball? I was like, yeah, for sure, man. And all right, let me make a couple calls. Let me text some people. So we text Rick and then uh, Rick Forney there. And um, yeah, not even 10 minutes later, I am getting a call from him. You know, FaceTime because yeah. I didn't. I don't have a number when I'm in America, so I just use FaceTime, iMessage, and so I get a FaceTime from him. I was like, "Oh, I, I think I recognize this guy." Oh my gosh, I recognize this guy. And he said, "Hey man, we want you to come on down. Let's. Are you, are you still interested in playing pro ball?" I was like, "Yeah, for sure." And then said, so, "Okay, uh, Andrew Colley is going to give you a call here anytime, and then we're going to go from there and we're going to figure out how, you, how we can get you down here. We want you down here for this weekend." So I had to pack up three years of my life in Lubbock and in a day, pretty much, and fly on out. So, How'd you do that? Hard, hard. But two I've done suitcases. That. But I've, I've packed yeah. enough times in my life for you know. And again, I didn't bring down too much stuff, and I didn't really always have enough money to buy new stuff. So it was pretty consistent throughout the whole thing. The hardest okay. part was like, okay, how many shoes can I take? And I was like, can't take the red royal blue cleats. So I'll take the turfs because they're nice turfs. Decision on shoes, not yeah, just for was, females that, as that well. Was, that was the hardest decision. Not, I, was deciding how many shoes can I bring. So I, I actually only ended up bringing these guys and a pair of walking shoes. So okay. I just left everything else there, threw it all, threw, threw, threw out the older stuff. I have a whole bunch of clothes I didn't wear, and I just put them. I gave them to Goodwill. So. Every time I leave a different city, I'm the same way. Whatever fits in the car is what I bring. Mm -hmm. Whatever doesn't fit in the car stays. So, so that's the, the rule cut. of thumb. It's got to make the cut. Make You've the cut. you definitely made the cut here in Winnipeg. <laughs> I mean, Shaw Park has definitely welcomed you, and they love. 
seeing a great starting pitcher from the left side as well because left-handed talent's hard to come by and skip will tell you that yeah. beginning of the year they had eight starters from the eight pitches from the right and four from the left so you're helping the left which is good trying to help <laughs> if you had a song you had to come out to the mound to what would it be Oh gosh! Uh, they don't do that for you guys. No, no, they, they don't. do it for the hitters. They, they should do it for the pitchers for the first inning. I, I agree with that. 100%. Maybe I'll work with uh, Stevie on that and see if we can get that going. <laughs> but if you had to have a song, what would it be? Uh, it's gotta be rock. It's okay. gotta be rock. So it's um, either gonna be uh, War Pigs, Black Sabbath, or Icky Thump by uh, the White Stripes. Okay. The two songs I like the beginnings of. You that's can still go over here the beginning, right? So. First thirty seconds. That's all you get. Yeah. Or you get the intro, and that's or you get the uh, chorus, and that's yeah, about true. it. True. But I mean, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're back home. You've been here for a little bit. It's kind of getting settled down a little bit. Absolutely. Good. Yeah. I mean, okay. things. I, it was a little banana lands for a bit there. Um, we were bouncing around a whole bunch uh, between here, the house, just trying to see people who wanted to be seen, like family. Um, but now that I've been here for a week and change, it's been nice just to kind of okay. Time is it? All right, let's go to the park. Let's there go hang out. And getting into a routine's been huge too. Being able to throw a whole bunch and just get get my lifting in, get some running in. It's been fun. Yeah. yeah. You got a Manitoba number yet or no? I got a matchup number. Okay, yet. so you're phone lighting up for tickets? No, no, no. Not yet. No, Good. That a boy. I'm still on the. I'm still under the radar. Good. I gotta <laughs> ask you about that duster. Your uh, picture <laughs> in Lubbock was absolutely sensational. <laughs> I thought I was going to meet some honky talk fella. And I'm like, wait a second, he's from Winnipeg. Yeah. But that duster is awesome. <laughs> is that like a true stand? Like, you know, that's your rec recognized thing? Or no, uh, we actually, I didn't have a stash until we were, uh, it was actually the regionals in the playoffs. And uh, we were doing everything right. Everything right. We're hitting balls hard. We're making good pitches. And we just could not get a break one time. It was like the last three, two weeks of our season. Could not catch a break. And so everyone just was like, all right, muzzies, let's go. So the whole team went matte mustaches, oh. and there were some beautiful ones out there. <laughs> beautiful mustaches. Especially when the winds go and the dust goes in Texas, just catches oh all that gosh. beautiful dirt. Isn't that beautiful? It's Licking nice. it up it's in the sixth like, inning? It's almost like a nice little orangish hue, oh. you know, just chilling around the outsides. <laughs> it's good. It adds a lot of color. Uh, being back home, what did you miss most knowing that you came back and be like, oh, I can't I miss this place so much? Or like oh. a favorite restaurant you get to go visit now? You know what? I think... <laughs> I, I mean, it's got to be the Heights. Um, okay. There's a place, Silver Heights St. Restaurant. St. James, yeah. You're the St. James kid. St. Yeah, St. Silver Heights Restaurant. Yeah. Man, that place is unbelievable. Great yeah. food, great, amazing people, good service. I mean, it's just, it's a nice little yeah. place, chill spot to go hang out. They got a patio now. I go hang out there. there you go. Uh, they got good beers on tap, things like that. Um, yeah, I'd say that's probably the most consistent spot that I go that I miss for sure. I mean, what about activities like the zoo, the forks, anything like that? Uh, you know, as far as activities go, I'm just going to hang out with my friends, I think, here. Uh, I missed them. I didn't come home for Christmas. Um, and I just love hanging out with them, chilling out with them, seeing how their lives are going. I got well, my be my best friend here. He's he was uh, married in last last year, last Christmas, and then now he's got a kid on the way. And I'm so happy I'm here for that and awesome. be a part of that kind of thing. So I'm just happy to be back in the city, man. It's good times here. Good, okay, mm -hmm. good times. Ryan Johnson, starting left-handed pitcher. Uh, look forward to your next start, maybe this weekend. Yeah, uh, and, yeah, I think so. Saturday. And uh, yeah, it's uh, great to catch up with you. Thank you. Hopefully, get to do it later in the season. Would love that. And uh, show us that first. That show us that fireball. Throw it up to the camera. That show us oh, what it looks like. Yeah, this this guy here. This there is it is. Just right generic, there. man. Just generic. It's it's. He makes it sound so simple. But you get between. You get in that plate. Forget about it. It's hard to hit. <laughs> I might try that next time here, on the Gold Eye Show, on ASTV. At Super 8 Winnipeg West, we have your comfort in mind with free Wi-Fi and free daily Superstart breakfast. We also have guest laundry facilities, a state-of-the-art fitness center, and a jetted hot tub. Sleep well in a spacious guest room equipped with a plush new bedding, a 50-inch flat-screen HD TV, microwave, mini refrigerator, and Keurig coffee maker. Or book a suite with a kitchen, ideal for extended stays. Super 8 Winnipeg West, located just inside the perimeter on Portage Avenue. So there we have it, three wonderful pitchers, two relievers, one starter, one from Manitoba. A great job by all three. Thank you much for joining us here on the Gold Eye Show, brought to you by The Common, Inside the Forks. We'll see you next time here from Shaw Parker.